Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? I'm going to assume yes, and that there's a massive delay, so that I'll just continue on. Just got back from the gym. First time in about five months. Oh, it feels good. It feels really, really good. It's gonna feel awful tomorrow. <laughs> Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. But right now. Oh, it feels good. Oh. You know, it's hard to stay motivated and do training at home and, you know, it's, it's too easy when you're at home, isn't it? You know, you do, you do a few push-ups, you do a few squats and then you think, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's good to go out, come back, feel feel a bit like, oh, it's actually nice to get out of the house um, and walk more than 100 metres. I mean, I've walked a few times since the whole shutdown thing. We, walk, we walked up the, the river a few times, grabbed, you know, the odd coffee and that type of thing, but no, nothing much. It's just nice to get out of the house. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so, what's the news then this week? Is there any news? I've not been seeing much. I know there's a new samurai game out, Ghosts of Something or Other, that looks really very good, and I know everyone's going to be saying, are you going to be playing it? <laughs> and Death Stranding's come out on PC, and everyone's going to be going, are you going to be playing it? Ah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's a few other games like that that are coming out and everyone's going to be like, you're going to be playing here? Um, and of course the answer is, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the long, long list of um, games that I have currently installed. Watch Dogs 2 is Watch Dogs 2 out. I've heard that's going to be pretty good. I've heard that's going to be pretty good. The Samurai game is PS exclusive though. Okay, good. So no one's going to be asking me if I'm going to play it until it comes out on PC. Okay, um, so yeah, I, I've seen there's quite a few games coming out. There are a group of Red Dead Redemption 2 players that are in the online mode dressed up as clowns yesterday protesting Rockstar in-game. Okay, not totally sure why that's news. I'm sure something terrible happened, but um, I haven't had time to play Red Dead Redemption 2 either. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, you know, I've, I found one solution for my, um, for my missing of the chat. I've actually got the chat on my game rig right now. Let's see if I can show you. You see, that's my game rig. That's my game rig. Look at that. Obviously, I can't play any games while I'm doing that. Thank you, Hikazu, for the resub. I can't, I can't play games like that, but you know. It's, uh, hey, look, <laughs> I can read what you're saying. Um, let's, the thing is, is I can't do any, uh, get, here, the games I've currently got to play, Sekiro Shadows Die twice, Star Wars Jedi Fallen, uh, Order, is it? Yeah, Doom Eternal still, Borderlands 3, now, Outward, I've got the DLC for, still need to play it. The Evil Within, which I've had installed since, was it, I don't know, is that 2016? Could be 2016. Mass Effect, still got that installed. Atom RPG, South Park, The Fractured Hole, The Long Dark. Ticket to Ride, I don't really need to play that. Um, let's have a look. I'm probably not going to play Chernobylite. Shadow Warrior. I installed Shadow Warrior because I saw the trailer for Shadow Warrior 3 and thought it was hilarious. Am I going to play it? No. Don't know why I installed it. I do not know why I installed it. So, so, so that's how we're doing with games that I've got to play. Still not play Doom Eternal. So, uh, yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> you know, for somebody who technically makes a living sort of playing computer games. I guess it's technically not how I make my living. I, I make my living making tutorials or telling stories through computer games. But 
for the sake of argument, let's just say I make my living playing computer games. I don't half play very few. That's terrible English. I don't half play very few games. Much English must learn. Um, yeah, for someone who makes a living playing computer games, I don't really play an awful lot of computer games, do I? I mean, really. <laughs> Editing videos. I am. That's actually what... Um, I'm going to give you... I mean, we're, we're, starting at the, we're starting at the whole channel news side of things this time anyway, by the looks of things. Um, I think I finally finished the prelude to Chapter 8 for Leonard. Um, I submitted it to the quality control department and they said it was okay. Um, I don't think they were paying much attention. Either that or they weren't horribly impressed. But anyway, um, it does, it does what it's supposed to do, which is set up chapter eight. Um, I've started episode one. I'll, I still have to finish recording it. Episode one is going to be slightly more complicated than the other ones. But editing episode one is going to take a little more time. Edit episode one t seems to take me more time each time I do a new chapter. Um, because again, I, I, I try to set up the theme of the chapter so that people... Basically, I, 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 every single one of my chapters has had a theme. You all know that, you've seen it. But if I don't set the theme up well enough at the start, I feel like people sometimes get a bit confused and then, you know, ask questions that, why are you not doing this? You could do that. Why are you not doing this? Because this is the Civil War chapter and that's not the Civil War. Yeah, you should go to Solstheim. Solstheim's great. Yeah, but this is the Dawn God chapter. <laughs> I'm stamping my foot. Dawn God chapter. So I always try and have a theme so that we stick more or less with that theme. People still come along anyway. <laughs> middle, middle of the Dawn God. Well, why aren't you going to kill those two dragons in the... Because I'm fighting vampires. <laughs> <laughs> like Leonard's supposed to cut himself in half and say one half to fight vampires and one half to fight dragons and another half that magically appeared to go off to Solstheim. But can't do the Dawn Guard in Solstheim. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, I always try to set up the, the start in the prelude and episode one so you get a good idea of what's coming and, um, you know, work from there. But obviously, it's always good to start well. You always want people to come into the chapter and just feel like, yeah, I know where this is going. I know where this is going to go. Um, so the, the, the initial few minutes, believe it or not, where you're just telling... It's instead of me sitting down for five minutes and going, right, in this chapter, what we're going to be doing is X. I want to try and make it for want of a better word, immersive. So that takes more time than you'd think, mostly because I'm never happy with it. I do it, and I think, no, that doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. It probably does work, but you, you get like that, I'm afraid. So, you never know what I'm up to. <laughs> oh, dear. You've got behind on the Lenny playthrough. Should I take bigger breaks on the Leonard playthrough. Should I be taking bigger breaks? Because I know a lot of people have fallen behind. Quadico hasn't kept up. <laughs> I think all, I think for the last three or four chapters, all she's seen are the preludes. <laughs> I've only got two more chapters planned. I'm not saying there won't be more chapters after that. But um, I've only got two more planned. And I'm thinking by the time I've done two more chapters of Leonard's playthrough, we're probably going to have a huge number of other things to be playing. Hopefully by then, Cyberpunk 2077. Quite possibly we'll be looking at Starfield by then. So, still an Outer Worlds and the Civil War. I think, generally speaking, if you focus on the Skyrim one before the Outer Worlds one, it's probably going to be better for you. I think, generally speaking, that the, the Leonard playthrough has been better received. Cyberpunk is never releasing. 
Oh, it will have released before I finish chapter nine. The, um, yeah. I mean, chapter eight's probably going to be a long one. I don't even know when I'm going to start releasing the videos, of course. I don't quite know how I'm going to do that, because, of course, I'm only, I'm not even halfway through the vampire playthrough at the moment. So, technically, at the current rate, we've got at least another five or six weeks of that, at least. Maybe more, actually. So... But um, I think chapter eight is going to be a reasonably long one, probably one of the longer chapters. And then chapter nine will probably be a long one as well. And if there's a gap between chapter eight and chapter nine, I'm, I'm thinking chapter nine is going to be, you know, finishing late 2021. So by then I'm expecting us to have Starfield. We'll have had Cyberpunk, Bloodlines 2, I do want to do some more. I, well, I, I really want to get uh, my Fallout New Vegas sorted out, maybe get Frontier played. Um, I don't think I'm doing a Tale of Two Wastelands playthrough, although I do want to do some tutorials for it. But there's a whole heap of things coming up, is what I'm saying. So, But once that happens, once we get something like Starfield, um, I, don't know, I don't know what's going to come after that. But Leonard might come back, you know, once I finish with Starfield, Leonard might make a return for Beyond Skyrim or something that we haven't done yet. But um, also, we you, you know, we don't know when Sky Oblivion might be out. And I mean, I don't want to plan for it, but, you know, there's been hints of that for a while now. And now I'm talking end of 2021, beginning of 2022. Will Sky Oblivion have been out by then? Because if so, that's going to be... The chapters... You love the fact that the chapters are planned out so much more cohesive. Yeah, I, 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 I've got a rough plan for them all, although very often those plans get completely ruined by Leonard. So... They're saying Sky Oblivion late 3021. I'm hoping that was a typo. <laughs> I think that was a terrible joke. Okay, well, say late 2021, and and you know, yeah, I'll be, I'll be. That's that's almost gonna be perfect. Um, yep. Yeah, um, so overall, I've got an awful lot of things for Let's Plays anyway. Sorry, I cracked my knuckles. I hope that didn't come over the microphone. <laughs> I should not do that. <laughs> um, and I don't know what other games there might be coming out that I might be interested in. Um, and but the, but but the question to will you play them will be probably not. I may buy them. <laughs> I may even install them. Will I play them? Probably not. Won't get time. Will I do a let's play of them? Almost certainly not. Whatever it is. I'm going to be doing Bloodlines. I am going to be doing Bloodlines. I'm going to be doing Cyberpunk. I'm going to be doing um, Starfield. I had to think about that for a while. I will obviously do Sky Oblivion. And if Elder Scrolls Six comes out um, while I'm still alive, I'll do that too. There's other vampire games beside Bloodlines. There's, there's tons of them. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be doing... You know, I do, I'm not going to have time to fit them in. There might be another Masquerade game I put in there. There's, I believe there's a, there's another Masquerade game which might be interesting. But again, it's the channel's already full. The channel is absolutely squashed, completely full. Um, so it's not as easy. I, live streams, I may do things that are a little out there. So Wasteland 3, almost certainly not... I'm not, a, here's the thing, I'm not a big lover of sort of isometric RPGs. I don't hate them, I like them, I like them, but I prefer first person or at least over the shoulder, things like The Witcher, a lot closer, I'm, 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 I'm a bigger fan of that, so I'm a bigger fan of real-time RPGs than I am uh, turn-based ones, but that doesn't mean I won't play them, I mean, I loved KOTOR, 
and that was sort of turn-based. Not really. I think it was more like pause-based. I, I don't. I, you know, I mean, it's it's. But again, it's time. It's time, 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 time. I do not have a lot of it. Um, will I play Wasteland Three? Maybe. Will I do? A, will, I do a, will I do a Let's Play? Mm, different matter. Wasteland Three might be the sort of game that actually works really well for a um, for a stream. Because, like, your Divinity Original Sin is sort of, like, top-down, and, and it works great for a stream. A lot of my preferences go by what I think work on my channel. Um, so... The thing is, when I'm playing first-person things, I can get into the character. When I'm playing third... When I'm playing sort of, like, top-down, isometric things, um, I'm controlling the character much more. So I'm much more out of it. Um, different type of game. I think it works better for the live stream. So, wasn't a lot of news. There's not really a lot of news going on, is there? Apart from, will you play X? Um, I've heard the new Watch Dogs game looks interesting, but again. Um, but it's, I mean, a lot of the games I play, you know, I do games that I love, and they just don't get well received on my channel. Look at things like Metro Exodus. I love the Metro games, but, you know, my viewers are just not that into it. Um, the same was true of the Outer Worlds, though, but I think that was uh, in big part down to the, the the fact that the Outer Worlds just was, it wasn't quite what everyone was expecting. I think a lot of people were expecting the Outer Worlds to be... New Vegas 2, New Vegas in space, and it really, really wasn't. So, um, it just didn't get the same reception. Um, I think Cyberpunk will probably be received well, but I would be playing that regardless, and I, and I would be doing a Let's Play, even if it's not that well received. That's just one of those games. It's like Bloodlines. Uh, Bloodlines 2, it's just one of those games that will be making an appearance on my channel just because it has to. It's kind of like Starfield, kind of like... These are the games I love to play, but they're also games I love to let's play. You know, whereas, whereas games like Metro, I love playing them, but honestly, I do understand why people don't find the let's play aspect of that as interesting. Because I'm... When I play Metro, I'm playing Metro. When I play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines... I'm playing Hank. And that's different, isn't it? You know, we're, we're like, if you if you play Metro or you watch me play Metro, they're not that far apart from each other. They are far apart, and a lot of people want to see what I do and how I react. But it's very different when I play Skyrim. When I play Skyrim, you, you don't watch me and it's like you're playing Skyrim. You watch me play Skyrim and you're watching Leonard, not Skyrim. So there is a difference, and I've I've realised that difference is quite um, apparent when it comes to the people viewing me. Now my Witcher series did pretty well. I put a lot of that down to how good The Witcher was, but I don't know. Maybe because it's so engaging that the characters, the story, and of course you make it your own. You do make it your own. So, but even that wasn't as engage as engaging to the viewers as Leonard. Because Leonard is, is, I think that's the thing with, with my let's plays of certain games, especially like um, RPGs, I can really make it my story, not the game story. So, and I think that's what it. Any input on the new Werewolf game, Werewolf Apocalypse Earthblood? No, I might keep my eyes out for that one though. What about Atom RPG? I've got it installed. That's another top-down one, isn't it? Maybe on a live stream sometime if I ever get time. So. But yeah. I think for, for, for games where you just want to watch me play because you're interested in how I play, those might actually be better off on live streams. They might actually. And I've, I've often wondered if I should do, like, slightly more live streaming and slightly less, um, well, not less, less playing, but, you know, more live streaming on the side of it. Um, 
I mean, there's a big part of it also is that the live streaming now is probably, from a business perspective, a bigger part of my... It used to be something I did on the side for fun, and it still is, but I can't help but notice the YouTube side of things has really shrunk, like massively shrunk, whereas the the Twitch side of things has increased. So, you know, at the moment, I would say, uh, I'm you, you know, the the, the ranking for, uh, for for importance as a business, YouTube has really gone down. That does not mean I will not be making YouTube videos because because my patrons, the people over on Patreon, they are the ones that are uh, financing my Let's Plays. And they they are, you know, they are supporting that content, which is good because I still love making that content. I adore doing the Skyrim series with Leonard. I do. I love it. And, and as, as long as I can manage to do that and make it work, I'm going to be doing it. I love doing that. Um, I, I like doing mod videos when the modding scene is all fresh and new. I love doing tutorials. But I do love telling the story of Leonard. I, I loved playing Hank as well, though. So... Please, not more live streams. VODs are too... Yeah, but here's the thing. Gnos, look at it this way, right? If you miss the live stream and you can't watch the VOD, I get it. But you're not losing anything if I do more live streams, yeah? Because because I'm I, here's what I, I... If I do Atom RPG, that is not going on my main channel. If it, it's I don't think it's the right sort of game for my main channel. Um, so I wouldn't be able to have it replace one of the existing slots on the timetable. I'd have to make it in addition, and that would swamp my channel, and I think it could actually harm my channel. Doing more games on my channel would probably harm it. You know, I have to really be careful not to bombard people. People are already saying, oh, I've not had time to keep up with X and Y and that series. I'm already pushing the limit. So if I do a live stream, like I did Civilization, I did a, a Civilization playthrough on live stream, probably about 20 hours. I will upload it to the live channel. 20 hours. It's quite long. If you don't have time to watch it, I totally understand. But you didn't lose anything because I live streamed it, yeah? Look at it that way. You would miss the YouTube content if it was gone. I, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like the live stream stuff, but, you know, the YouTube stuff is why I'm here. I love doing the Let's Plays. I love playing Leonard. Um, I've realized I should never play good characters. <laughs> Which probably says something very bad about me. I mean, I always play flawed characters, even the good ones. Richard was good. He was a hero and he was fundamentally flawed. But he, even though people loved the Richard playthrough, nobody's responded to Richard the way they responded to Leonard. Or Jack, or Jack, or Hank. And that really does say an awful lot about you guys. And none of it good. <laughs> Dalitas Drain. Thank you for the resub. You should do a good character every now and again to mix things up. And uh, the, how much people liked Barry is just beyond me. Richard did a bunch of evil stuff too. Richard didn't. Richard was a bloody hero. He was cranky, but he did nothing but good stuff. Um, I mean, he was, he, was, he, was, he was just heroic from the moment go, but in a very, very hard-to-spot way. Um, Steve... Why to rule the world? Jack, anger management, drunk. <laughs> don't generalize. Some of us prefer good characters. I'm not set lot. I'm I'm not saying people don't like good characters, but Frank was never that popular. No one ever asks for Frank T-shirts. <laughs> um. Leonard is a really complex character. I don't think of him as evil. He is evil. He is he is a sociopath. If he were alive today, he would be on posters and they'd be calling him the face of evil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Geralt. Oh, yeah, okay. I played Geralt of Rivia as a good guy. I mean, you know. But then again, not as popular as the Leonard series. Uh, Will. I mean, I liked Will, but again, you know. Then he kills people and then steals all their stuff. <laughs> yeah, Lenny's, Lenny's, Lenny's a pure sociopath. <laughs> uh, Leonard. Ming. Ming? Yeah. <laughs> Ming is underrated. Um, we need the Frank, I'm an option two. Was he an option two or an option four? I can't remember which one was. Richard ate people. Yes, but only when hungry. <laughs> he was a werewolf. That's not, you know, when you're a werewolf, people are not people. They're food, right? That's like saying, that's like saying, you know, um, Geralt of Rivia was evil because he had a steak and ate a cow. <laughs> Lenny is misunderstood. Leonard. It's Leonard. <laughs> that That's Bit Richard. Mr. Hyde is not Dr. Jekyll. Yeah, sort of. Um... Yeah, I would I would say there was a big difference between Richard when he was a werewolf. But again, it's and it's not about being evil, is it? It's it's you change perspective. You're suddenly a werewolf and people look the way bunny rabbits look to humans. Are we are, was was Henry was my kingdom come deliverance Henry evil for killing bunnies and eating them? Everyone's going to say yes now. Three V Gopher was asking about founders badge earlier this week. Yeah, does Three V have a founders badge? Does somebody have a that founders badge? I don't even know what it looks like. But your favorite Richard moment was when the horse died on it. Don't I don't know. I don't even. F is that the first thing? Is that the first? Does that only appear? on your name if you're a founder in the channel that you're posting in. Okay, now I know what it looks like. There we go. Your forest character was evil for catching bunny rabbits. Yeah, unfortunately, my forest character wasn't a character. That was, it was a gaming avatar. Um, it was me, purely me, not caring. <laughs> It's uh, it's just a special subscriber badge badge for the first fifteen. Uh, yeah, right. But it only appears. You only get that first if in a channel you type in if you are a founder for that channel. Hello, Hakazu. I don't know what the star is. But yeah. So um, no, Rich Richard was a goody two shoes. Richard Richard was. Grump, grumpy, complainy, while saving you kind of person. Um, Leonard is charming, smiling, while robbing you and murdering your dog kind of person. You know, <laughs> it's the whole um, all that is gold does not glitter thing. It's the, you know, I, I think an evil person would seem... Would would feel fouler but look nicer or something like that kind of thing. <laughs> Lebowski said, Oh, I thought it meant you had Fallout first. <laughs> Jan Dev. Oh no, 3V gifting a tier one sub to Jan Dev. Thank you. Ooh, look, another badge. Oh! So Jandev had um, was a was a founder as well. He doesn't get that. He doesn't get that badge because three three Ventic gifted it him, and three Ventic is a founder. Jandev, you were actually a founder. 
but you lost your sub recently and now 3v's gifted it you got it back is that what's or did i miss something Because you you didn't have you didn't ha but you were one of the original subs yeah you were one of the original subs Lenny would be a modern politician oh god yeah 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 <laughs> Leonard would poison the entirety of Tamriel if it was in his best interest. And he'd do it without blinking. <laughs> what signifies my Nosferatu? I don't give a damn. Uh, Hank's a bit more complicated. Hank is... Um, Hank has, has obviously been... Had social problems when he was growing up. He obviously had parents who were... Um, well, Hank seemed to suggest they might have been party animals, um, but also were pretty unpleasant to him, pretty insulting. He obviously had problems making friends um, and relating to other people. He obviously has a lot of, you know, pent-up rage and anger on that. Um, and now that he has been embraced, oddly enough, in spite of... The fact that as a Nosferatu, that has now emphasised the social pariah aspect of his nature. It's almost pushed him to the point where he's embraced it and now has made it almost like his superpower. You know. I'm terrifying. I'm ugly. And, and like it's almost he's gone through the barrier to the other side where he's so... I mean, do you remember um, Jack Nicholson's Joker? Um, and he was, um, I can't remember what her name was, the actress, but uh, he was basically hitting on Batman's girlfriend. And he said something along the lines of, we can be beauty and the beast. But of course, if anyone else calls you a beast, I'll kill them. Sort of thing. Like he'd, 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 he was obviously deformed and kind of ugly, but he was now, I'm the beautiful one and you're all ugly. Hank's gone through to that side, sort of, almost. Um, so it's less I don't give a damn and more he's, he's embraced what used to be a bad thing for him, which is why being the Nosferatu is actually a positive thing for him Overall, so Hank is chaotic. You see, I hate D and D alignments. However, in this case, it might not be a bad description because Hank is ridiculously unpredictable as well. Kim Bassinger, that was it. Yes, um, Hank is unpredictable. He he is mercurial. Very quick to anger, but also very, very quick to sort of, you know, cheer up. So, um, like he could, a good example of this is when he'd, he'd suddenly, he was getting annoyed with the guard because he thought, okay, I need, I need to get in this room. This guard is getting in the way. I'm just going to kill this guard to get out of it. I've had enough. I'm killing the guard. And then the guard starts humming and Hank's like, God, is adorable. And then he can't kill him. It's like that. That's Hank. Um... So, yeah, chaotic is actually not a bad description. Um, so. And as other, other people have said, H Hank's got a little bit of madness in him. People have said, are you sure you're not playing a Malkavian? Thing is, I think the Nosferatu, at least in Bloodlines, do exhibit certain... You know, you get the ones like Bertram Tong, who seems really level-headed, really sort of like, you know, sharp. You get the ones like Imalia, who's absolutely obsessive. But then you get ones like Gary. And don't tell me Gary doesn't have a twinge of that Joker madness to him. 
he likes to play off the fact that he's hideous and that he's scary. He enjoys... I think in many ways, Hank probably relates to Gary quite a lot. Um, and like um, Gary, he's got a bit of a flair for the dramatic. He's got a bit of a... Yeah. Yeah, so so Gary, yeah, Gary loves drama, but he also, I mean, he's got that little bit, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for people who are watching my, um, but when you discover Gary's room, Gary's got issues, okay? Gary's got issues. Gary, Gary definitely, definitely is not letting something go, right? Um... <laughs> So, you know, I, 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 Hank might be a bit like that. Oh, but, but, um, oddly enough, though, Gary's probably one of the more likable characters. But I don't want to get too much into that because that's, we've, we're not remotely up to that in the Let's Play, are we? No, we're not. It's kind of it's kind of semi annoying actually that the, the fact that I've got a head and can't talk about it, it's semi annoying a little bit. It it really works better for my um for my timetable doing this, but there are times it's annoying. Partly because you know what I really want to do at the moment? I want to do a live stream where I play Gangrel with the Clan Quest mod, but I'm worried that playing that that's going to be a little bit confusing for me to have. Even though it would be live stream only, I think it might be a bit confusing, and there might even be moments where I accidentally do spoilers for Hank, so I'm, I'm going to avoid doing that. Um, but I am going to do, I am I am intending to do a Gangrel Clan Quest mod playthrough. I've never played Gangrel, I've never played the Clan Quest mod, and apparently the Clan Quest mod allows you to do a Sabbat ending. Um, and I thought, hey, that sounds pretty cool, actually, so... So yeah, but I need to wait until I've finished the Hank story. I found out today that Bloodlines 2 isn't going to have Nosferatu as a clan. Or Gangrel, but I didn't care about Gangrel, but it's not going to have Nosferatu as a clan. I'm gutted. I'm wondering if they'll do DLC. Maybe they'll have a Nosferatu DLC. Although then everyone's going to get mad. You took this out deliberately to sell it back to us. But um, I don't know. I'm guessing the why of it is you do need to do a lot of other stuff. Most of the clans... Most of the clans play the same way. If you actually look at the Nosferatu playthrough on Bloodlines 1, it's, it's different, but it's not as different as it perhaps should be. And I'm guessing they probably didn't... I mean, here's the thing. It is a little weird that the Nosferatu, in, at least in the first bloodlines, can, can actually walk around clubs pretty, you know. I mean, I, I crack jokes about it and say it's because I'm dressed up as a, you know, as a, as a fetish character or something. And there are some characters wearing weird clothes and full face masks and things. So, I, I, but at the same time, you know... In, for Bloodlines 1, you literally cannot play the way you probably should play Nosferatu. However, isn't it true that the Nosferatu in later editions of the tabletop game became a little less hideous? Like, you know, if they had a if they if they wore a hoodie, they might be able to get away with just walking into a bar and ordering a drink if they kept their head down. I don't know. Um, so, I, d I don't know. Maybe they could have got away with actually Nosferatu interacting more like other clans in the, um... You think they're going to release more clans as DLC? That, to be honest with you, I'm okay with that as long as the core game has the $60 worth. If the core game has the $60 worth. But I must admit, there was a little side of me secretly hoping to do my first playthrough as a Nosferatu. Partly because I'm sort of loving it, but also because I figured, you know what? That'll be different. Because <laughs> let's be honest, everyone's going to be playing 
Toreador and all the YouTubers are going to be doing Malkavians because Malkavians are suddenly the in thing. They're the, they're the cool thing. I like to think I did a playthrough as Malkavian before they were cool. <laughs> but now, now it's the cool thing, isn't it? All the cool kids play the Malkavian. So I figured, I figured, I figured go in as Nosferatu because no one will do Nosferatu as their first playthrough. So I thought, yay! Go for the hipster. Yeah, I see. I see. It's not, but I'm. It's, you're not a hipster if you're the one that starts the uh, trend. Yeah, I'm now claiming. I'm now claiming uh, that that the entire Malkavian trend is is because of me. <laughs> I don't think it is, but <laughs> I'm going to pretend to myself so I can smile. Um, but um. But no, apparently you can't play Nosferatu. I was also wondering, I didn't think this would be a thing. I was also wondering whether you could import your character from Bloodlines 1. Because I thought that would be really, really cool. I didn't think they would, though. I thought that would be just so problematic. Especially seeing as, you know, by the time you end um, Bloodlines 1... You're a demigod. Um, well, you, you really are strong. You know, you max out your character... Um, so it, you'd be, you'd be starting the game as a verifiable badass. Um, <laughs> um, can't prove it wasn't me. True, can't prove it wasn't me. I played it a long time ago, didn't I? I played it a long, long time ago. It was in response to the IGN top 100 list where they didn't even mention uh, Bloodlines 1. Uh, but yeah, so no Nosferatu, and we can't get Hank. I would love it if they did release a DLC where uh, you could play Nosferatu and import characters from the first one. Even though that would be massively overpowered because you'd start the game with like you know <laughs> all your disciplines flexing. Um, I'd be kind of I'd be kind of fun to just take Hank for a. Because I'm enjoying playing, Hank. There are going to be some moments through this playthrough when you just realise I had a really good time playing him. Um, It's kind of like it's reset your points. Oh, do you think they'll do that? Do you think they'll um, import a character, maybe allow you to import the character, but... Because Mass Effect did it in a really good way. Mass Effect 2 took your Mass Effect 1 character... And it gave you some, um, some improvements, right? Um, but the way it was explained if you th is that you get this new special ability, this new implant or something that they put in you, and it's so much more powerful than all of the other powers you used to have or something like that. I think it's... So Mass Effect 2, it kind of felt like, even though you were still starting out relatively weak, the whole fact that they'd found you, brought you back from death, put in some new superpower, that you were actually still pretty... You'd, you'd still kept a lot of your prowess, which is a good way to do it. I quite like that. Um, welcome, Adam Sanguine. Uh, the character you play in Bloodlines 2 starts off as a thin blood. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, here's the thing, though. You say it never happened... I'm just saying maybe for DLC they would allow you to do it. Uh, but again, it depends on how the story goes. And is the game going to be moddable? Oh, so we're going to be going into the Di the Diableri. Are we really? We start out as a thin blood. Because isn't the only way to become, to stop being a thin blood to, ooh. They've already confirmed mods. Oh god! Depends on how moddable this is. This game's gonna be, but I mean, if 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 one day in the future they actually th there are mods or there's some of the they actually allow you to import your character in some way, I I could just pretend anyway. I I'd just make a Nosferatu and call it Hank and pretend, but then it'd be it'd be very difficult to explain the power. Difference, so we'd have to look. I'm planning way ahead, aren't I, on this? Just, 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 you know. 
ignore me. The only problem is, is when, when games companies tend to confirm things, oh, we're going to have mod support, it doesn't always necessarily mean exactly what you think it's going to mean. But yeah, I am looking forward to Bloodlines too. It's in a different city and a different state. Hank can travel. Because we know it's going to have some returning characters from the first one, so it's not like we, vampires can't cross the state lines. So, you know... <laughs> already imagine Hank on a bus oh I don't know I can actually th I see I don't want to spoil things for you but I was about to say I could see Hank in a limo <laughs> uh, I actually wish this game Bloodlines 1 I really wish the game gave you way more options on the outfits the fact that there's only one set of outfit for each clan does annoy me because I have to say you know Freddy's outfit my, my Malkavian outfit the cat in the hat outfit with the long pimp coat I could see Hank rocking that I could totally see Hank rocking that just totally <laughs> oh. State lines. Pfft, I travel occasionally, Jack. I'm assuming Jack's back. I'm assuming Jack is back. Was Fallout Jack named after Vampire Jack? No. Uh, no. Just, it was just a name. Um, and it was due to... I, I, mean, I can't even remember quite how I came up with the name for Jack. But it was something to do with the uh, nursery rhyme. I, I, I can't totally remember. I, I Honestly... They're milking the nostalgia hard for VTMB2. Good! Milk that nostalgia. I want the nostalgia. I want to see all the old favourites. I even want to see the people I hate. Even the ones that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I yeah, no. Here's the big question. Here's the big question. Do we know what the canon is? I mean, like, like, we know certain characters are coming back, but, you know, Therese Jeanette, I mean, I, I, I'm guessing they don't make a return because it would be, then they'd have to set canon. You actually <laughs> like LaCroix. Yeah, well, that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Have you guys ever done a playthrough of LaCroix where you just constantly tell him to F off? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not gonna, I, let, let's tell you, we're heading into spoiler territory now. We're, 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 we're heading into spoiler territory. Oh dear. The only thing we know is VTMB2 is based on the fifth edition of the tabletop. And isn't that the one where the, the Nosferatu are not quite as hideous as in the first one? I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. The only problem with, I, this is a bit of a spoiler for those of you, so put your fingers in your ear for 30 seconds. If you tell him to F off all the time, I don't think you get the um, the haven. Can, 
And the reason that's a pain in the backside is it means you have to keep going back to Santa Monica to get your emails. I think. Don't, don't, I don't, if I'm wrong about that, I might be wrong about that. Um, oh, of course, it depends what clan you're playing. If you're playing Tremere or Nosferatu, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, yeah, you can take your fingers out of your ears now. Um, but anyway, isn't 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 VTMB fifth edition? Um, isn't so? Isn't the fifth edition tabletop game the Nosferatu? Aren't they a little less hideous? I think. Am I wrong on that? I think I read it somewhere. I think it's like they, they don't necessarily look quite... Because Hank looks ridiculous, right? Although some of the Nosferatu you meet don't look as ridiculous as Hank. Some of the Nosferatu don't actually look totally beyond the pale. Like, if they, if they did put a... Um, if they did put a hoodie on and maybe it was a bit dark, they might get away with it. Again, I don't want to do too, much, too many spoilers, but there, there, are, there is at least one, no, probably even two Nosferatu who, when you shine a light on them, definitely look like Nosferatu, but actually overall, their, their facial structure isn't too different. Even Gary, even Gary... When you look at him, if if he had a hood up, might get away with it. Um, but the player Nosferatu in Bloodlines One is uh, is an obvious monster, as is Bertram Tong. Bertram Tong is an obvious monster. Uh, Brother Kanker was an obvious one as well. You know, there are some very very obvious, hideously deformed Nosferatu. But even in Bloodlines 1, there were a few that were actually more, you know, they still looked different, but um, they, they didn't look quite as... It, it, they could have been people who were just putting pale makeup on. If they kept the mouth shut, they could just be people with pale makeup. Oh, and they have to hide their ears. The ears are usually a giveaway as well. But, you know, if you have your hood up and you keep your teeth hidden you get away with it. So, the characters are more realistic and not so cartoony. Okay. Yeah, they still walk around, but they need to do charisma and deception checks, maybe? Okay, or, or probably if they start speaking to people, the people might get it. But, like, if you're just walking around with a hoodie up, no one's going to freak out. Yeah, look in the wiki, it says most Nosferatu don't break the masquerade by just being seen. Yeah, I thought so. That's that's a change, I believe. I believe that changed in one of the editions. So... Yeah, it would be fun if the player decision of how open they can be about their Nosferatu appearance. I mean, we don't know about Bloodlands 2. We don't know what the options are going to be. Um, they're... Uh, if you're skulking around in leather straps, though. Here's the thing. The leather straps might actually help keep the masquerade because everyone's staring at the weird outfit. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> it's a shame we can't play Nosferatu. It's my first clan. I don't know. Which clan am I going to play, then? Which clan am I going to play Bloodlines 2? Got a feeling it's gonna be Bruja. Ventru, I don't know. I gotta be honest, Ventru just do not. I don't. I I just no. I don't. They're a bit. They're, they're a bit too straight laced for me. Toriadors are a bit too sexy as well. I'm not. I'm not. It's a bit too on the sexy side, you know. Just roll a die. Um, I 
I'm th- yeah, Bruja could be a good option. I, I think I'm I'm probably going to need to. I I try to avoid too many spoilers, but I, I might try and look at some gameplay. Um, doesn't Bloodlines 2 have a bit more movement to it, a bit more verticality? I saw a bit more sort of like running and jumping, and I kind of like that idea. Tremere, I don't know. I'll have to see. But I do like Blood Magic. I do. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to think about that now. I am going to... Th- because honestly, I think I was going to go straight in with Nosferatu. I'm now gutted. Roller dice. I don't, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll think about it. It probably won't matter too much. I'll probably enjoy it and play it multiple ways through. Um, yeah, Tremere could be interesting. However, ladies and gentlemen, we've discussed no news, no modding news, no nothing, but our time is coming to an end. <laughs> we've just been chatting about stuff. I don't think any of this needs to go on the, um, on the, uh, (laughs) on the channel. There's absolutely nothing. It's just a ramble. Maybe I'll put it up as a ramble. Just rambling about random stuff. Um, but yes, the 76 o'clock ramble. For once a week with very little game drama. Yeah, it's kind of nice, isn't it, really? It's kind of relaxing. One thing I will tell you guys, I once I get episode one finished recording and I get my the editing done, I might be taking a few days off. I don't know if that means I'll be taking a few days off streaming, but I think I'm going to take a few days off recording. I actually realised the other day I've just not had I've not had any time off this this year. My family went away without me, and um, I was trying to catch up because of all the noise. Um, but once I've broken ground on Skyrim and I know I've got episode one done and I, and I feel, okay, I'm happy with it. I think the pressure will be off and I think I'll just take a few days and just, I don't know, binge watch some Netflix or something and just relax. I may live stream, I don't know yet, but just a, just a fair warning, there may be a few days where... Um, I'm not, not that you'll notice actually, because I've already got my videos uploaded. You probably won't even notice, don't know why I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, I am not playing Civ 6 ever again. I've uninstalled it. That That's a life killer. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, <laughs> I'll keep you guys up to date. I will be back on Sunday for Divinity Original Sin with Quadico. Thank you for joining me. I will see you guys next time.